guys, today we will learn the easiest fast song, and this is Arabesque Open 100, number two by Burke Mueller. So first we will go over what makes the song easier than it sounds. And then we will go over some challenges that you may face as you're learning this piece. And finally, we will learn how to play this piece steady, fast, and artistically beautiful. Let's get started. What makes this piece easier than it seems? Well, all of the 16th notes actually fall into a five finger position. So the right hand is starting in like an A minor five finger position. So it doesn't do any interesting scales. It doesn't do anything that would be more complicated than just a five finger position. And five finger positions tend to be pretty elementary. So that makes this piece easier to play and easier to really play at a faster tempo too. The next thing is that all of these fast 16th notes are actually going up or down by step. When you're going up or down by step, it's so much easier to read the music just because you're just looking, it's going a step up, it's going a step down, but it's also a lot easier to physically play because you don't have to figure out which fingering to use or get your fingers used to some kind of different, maybe even awkward pattern. Here, it's really just going up or down. And see how the hand position just moves over like that. That's it. The left hand, when the left hand has 16th notes, it's the same thing. We are in a five finger position. Here we do have a sharp, so it's a little bit more difficult, but really not that much. Just going up or down by step with the sharp. Move back, move back. So nothing that actually moves out of the five finger position in the 16th notes. That makes it easy. The second thing that makes this piece a little easier is that the chords stay pretty close so that you don't have to do big jumps. Here we just kind of stay close. When you're reading at the chords, look at the bottom note and then the intervals going up from that bottom note. So we have an A, we go a third up, third up, there's our E minor chord, and that repeats a lot in the piece. Then uh, in measure five, we have A, we're going a fourth up, third up, and that repeats a few times. In measure eight, we have a G going a third up, fifth up, and there's most of your chords. Look at the repeating chords overall because you will not have that many chords to remember and to read as you're playing this. Now, what challenges may you face as you're learning this piece? And really, it's kind of unexpected in this piece because all the more challenging parts of it are dealing with eighth notes and not 16th notes. You may have a little bit more of a challenge in measure seven through 10. because the melody gets more interesting over here, and then you have the interesting articulation, staccato, legato, staccato, drop into the accent, and then back to that legato, staccato, and drop. So that's going to be a little bit more complicated uh, to get that articulation in there, those hand movements, in order to get it right. For some people, the part starting at measure 12 where the left hand has the 16th notes may be very challenging. And so if that is you, take that part and do it a lot slower. The other thing that's challenging here is that there's kind of two melodies in here. The right hand has its own melody while the left hand also has a little melody. Listen to that together. Very pretty. 
pretty intertwining melodies right there. It sounds great. You can even decide which melody you want to make a little bit louder than the other one. You might want your left hand louder or you might want the right hand melody to be louder. Either one is fine and either one will be beautiful, but there's a little bit of artistic choice in there. And the last part that I think is actually the most challenging of the piece is measure 17, 18, and 19. In this part, you have intertwining melodies in the right hand and the left hand. It is eighth note, so it is still moving. There's a diminuendo, poco a rallentando, so we're slowing down. But the thing that really makes it difficult is that the fingering changes. Unlike in the rest of the piece where you're staying within a five finger position most of the time, here, the right hand, has a three over two over and the left hand also has a little bit of a weird fingering five then three right here one and I didn't play that in the right rhythm but that's just to help you figure out what where that fingering gets a little bit tough so if you want to play that right, really work on getting that fingering right away. You don't want to play this with the incorrect fingering for a few weeks and then try to fix the fingering because you will build a habit of playing an incorrect fingering and it will be very difficult to break that habit and get this part to a good smooth place. Fingering is actually very important in getting a piece fast and well and without all those breaks that we often hear beginners play with. Now let's talk about how to get this piece to a place where you will be able to play it fast and steady and beautiful. So first of all, take your time and make sure you learn it slowly. Don't be in a hurry. Most of the time, if a student starts with a piece fast is, and is not ready with the technique, then the student will not be able to actually accomplish a beautiful, fast, steady tempo. So you want to make sure you're starting it nice and slow so that you know all of the notes at a slow, steady tempo first. If you're getting impatient with yourself, learn it in sections. You don't have to wait to have all the notes down for the full entire piece to speed up any section. You can learn just measure one to 10 and then speed up that section as you go. Or even me measure one to six to have fun with it and then learn the rest of it. And that way you'll know, I can reach this tempo, it'll be a little bit more motivation for you. You will be able to do that section well and then learn the next section and speed that up. Learn the next section and speed that up. But how do you actually speed it up? Some great tips for this is trying to play all the 16th notes as staccato, like you're plucking the keys. And I think I did that a little bit faster, but you can do it at a much slower tempo if you need it, just plucking the keys. Then you can do two different rhythms to really help you get that technique and articulation. So it's gonna be long, short, long, short. Long, short, long, short, long. And just continue that through all the 16th notes through the piece. And when you do one rhythm, you want to make sure that you also do the opposite rhythm as well. So that's gonna be short, long, short, long, short, long, short, short, long, short, long. This rhythm students also always find challenging, so it takes some practice. Take your time. You will get it if you keep trying. And finally, use the metronome. You can start with a slow tempo. Don't do a big section when you're doing it this way. Don't try the full song. Try just maybe 10 measures, maybe even four measures if you're having trouble with 10 measures and speed up that section, you want to see quick progress when you are speeding up like this. So take it at a slow tempo, for example, let's say quarter note equals 60, and then take it up to the next mark on the metronome and the next mark. If you're using a physical metronome, it will be going up by three or four, so like 60 to 64 to 68. If you're going up on metronome app, then just don't go up by one, go up by a few each time. And you want to feel confident at each tempo and really play it without mistakes and without a pause. 
That way, you know you mastered that tempo. So it might take you five times at the tempo. It might take you 10 or 15. But as you get faster, you will find that you actually have to play it less and less times at each tempo. And sometimes you may only have to play it once at a tempo in order to move up to the next higher tempo. And that way, you will also be able to speed it up well. Now, if you use all these things together, you should get to a point where your tempo is fast and it is nice and steady and beautiful. And as you're working up with your tempo, you also want to put in the dynamics. So the dynamics are written in through the piece. We're starting in off with piano, soft. Then we have a crescendo in measure five to six, back to piano, sforzando in measure 10. So all of these things make the piece so much more interesting. All the accents in the piece. You want to work on that even when you're playing slow. When you do the sforzando or the accent, make sure you're dropping your hand in. So up, down, up, drop. And finally, bring out the melody. If you play the chords really loud, this is just not going to make this piece sound nice. If I play the chords and they overwhelm the right hand in the beginning, You can hear the difference right away. It doesn't sound good. We need to hear that melody in the right hand. I hope you found this elementary piano tutorial helpful for Arabesque Opus 100 number no. 2 by Bergmuller. It's a great easy, fast piece for you to learn, especially if you're in the elementary stage, maybe even earlier intermediate stage, and you want to learn something that's fast, that's not really all that difficult, and that will bring satisfaction and be impressive, this is a great piece. Please do give it a like and subscribe for more. Uh, comment down below if you enjoyed it as well. I would love to hear from you. If there's a piece that you want me to do a piano tutorial or a piano master class on, please comment down below as well and I will see if I can do that for you. If, and if you think there's somebody who would benefit from learning this arabesque and we think they would find this piano tutorial helpful, please do share this with them. Have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye-bye.